Hello everybody, it's Destiny Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the T-10. Uh, the T-10 is a tier 9 Russian heavy tank. Honestly, this thing performs more like a medium than a heavy. It's got heavy armor, and if you get it into the right position, haul down, this thing will stand up to a lot of punishment. So, first things first, let's actually jump right into the statistics here. So, starting off, whenever you had the uh, final upgrade, or let's actually say the stock upgrade... Stock, thank you, 175, 217, and 161. Keep in mind this is stock, not going to be the greatest. But once you slowly get it fully upgraded, you're going to be looking at a lot of massive buffs. So 258 standard AP pin, uh, 340 heat. That heat pin is going to make a big difference. It is literally comparable to every single tier 10 gun in the game. 68 millimeters, a high explosive pin. It's quite the amount of high explosive pin combined with that 440 alpha. And if you can get that high explosive to pin 530, that's going to really increase your DPM. Uh, I always recommend to load a couple of high explosives no matter what. Just because you never know when you can use them. I run into a lot of situations that I can get a couple out. So that's why I prefer to load a couple. It has decent concealment at 0.11 you know, it's, it's not the greatest. You're definitely not a medium or light tank, but it's got higher concealment than compared to most. Combined with that, you have 400 meters of U-range, and with 400 meters of U-range, you're right now capable of getting that 400 up to 470. So, in return, it's it's not too bad, but at the same time, it you know, there's going to be a lot of other tanks out there that are going to be outperforming with without really much of an issue now the standard rounds your ap they travel at 940 meters while your heat rounds travel at three 920 i don't know what i was i was reading the penetration just yeah it it's it's saturday it's saturday it's saturday yeah okay Jumping further into it, you've got a 4.72 rounds per minute. You can actually get this to 6 rounds a minute. You can get your reload time down to 10 seconds on the dot if you're running basically everything except for a gun rammer. I do not run a gun rammer on my T10. I actually like to rock it with verticals. I like to run verts. Base reload time at 12.7, aiming time 3.2, ammo capacity, 30 rounds of ammo capacity. You're going to want to try and mess around with it. My loadout that I like to use is 14.13.3. Aim time 3.2, it's not exactly the greatest aim time. You're going to be feeling it lacking quite a bit, especially when you return a corner and you want to try and get that shot out. But occasionally, if you just wait a little bit and you wait for, let's say... Um, maybe 1.5 seconds or until you see your bloom about halfway through, then fire. That's usually about one of your guns ready to hit with 70%, you know, of its original base value. Combined with that, not the greatest gun dispersion values at 0.38. And 5 degrees of gun depression, definitely not going to be a ridgeline worker. 15 degrees of elevation, it gets the job done. It's not going to be feeling too bad. Combined with that, you have 200 turret armor, a 201 up in the sides. We'll take a look at the actual armor model here in a sec. Along with that, turret traverse speed of 26 degrees horsepower. Your power to weight is 14.75. And what I really laugh at on this tank, the only thing that increases that is actually putting on the stock gun or decreasing your gun, which really, this tank, having the same engine, look, everything's stock. It changed by... 0 0.01 so there's kind of a really weird thing here so 201 129 and somehow the turret weighs exactly the same with 250 201 and 90 so i i don't really know what to say about that except for good job <laughs> okay over to the armor model here let's take a look at the front this is up against its own gun 258 340 heat pin against the heat yeah as you guys can see your armor up in the front's not going to be holding off too well. Maxing out that gun depression, let's say you get your 5 degrees coming over a ridge. It's going to be giving you a little bit of extra armor up in the top at 300 millimeters once you swap back over to AP. It still has a high chance of going through. Go away. But you've got a couple auto ricochet positions. Along with that, the top armor, it's 40 millimeter stick, so 122s can't overmatch. But let's say you're going up against an M103 or a T110E5. They have a 120 millimeter. They're just going to auto ricochet right off the top of the armor. Now, against heat rounds, heat rounds, the angle that the top armor is actually at, it can be penetrated with heat rounds. 
So keep that in mind. The turret on this, you got 258 down low up in the sides, but the closer you get inwards, 284 to 300 to about 370. And as you guys can see, it's a decent turret. It's not a bad turret. It's going to hold up. Go away. Stop coming here. Stop. Stop. Thank you. Go. Side armor, we're going to be looking at, I want to say, 80 millimeters of side armor in total, which honestly, you can side scrape, no problem. I've been reverse side scraping inside this tank quite a bit just because it's got that really nice angle. And let's say you need to drive forward, there's a turn off to your left. So then right behind you is where you want to be looking. So just rotate your turret behind you, pull forward. So let's say you're pulling a very specific corner and you want to get lined up. You're driving forward past the corner that you were trying to get to. It's going to make your side armor a lot harder to go through and just making it overall nice. However, your rear armor in the back, 16 millimeters, can be overmatched by almost everything. Combined with that, 50 millimeters of rear armor, reverse side scraping inside this tank. It is a little bit scary just because you had this little bit of a slant here that's going to be really easy to go through. So... Primarily, if you can, just try and peek corners a tad bit, use your gun depression, get lined up, and yeah, work it. Honestly, T10, I've been playing with this tank for a while. I bought it back a couple months ago, and I've been putting more matches into it, and just absolutely enjoying the crap out of it. Now, before we jump into some actual gameplay, first things first, what I want to do with you guys is take a look at my equipment. I'm running Advanced Optics. Gun stabilizer, improved ventilation, and the fourth piece of equipment that shouldn't even exist for whatever reason. It's still in the game. This is something I recommend to never take off your tank just because originally it was an in game mechanic and they made it a piece of equipment. So, yeah, honestly, if, if they were to remove the uh, outline target and make that a base game option and then take away show penetration chance, I would actually use this equipment slot for let's say advanced concealment, um, advanced suspension, or possibly even a traction system. But since it has the outline target, outline target is just something that, yeah, I don't know what was going through their head when they first was like, oh, hey, let's let's do this and let's call it absolutely amazing. I'm gonna disappear off camera here because I like to show off the gameplay without myself. It also makes it to where I can actually get the mic positioned a little bit better, wipe off the top of it, make it look nice, you know, a little bit of dust. I feel like I've been uh, slacking off and cleaning a little bit, but hey, you know that happens. We're human. All right, so first map, we're in Himmelsdorf. We are top tier. Type 4, VK, 4502B, E75. Looking like a pretty good lineup right here. Nothing too bad, you know, just regular match. Uh, there's uh, two tier 7s in the team, one tier 7 in our team. I wasn't paying too much attention to that. It's actually nice to see that right here. But this replay, the reason why I selected this one is because there's some pretty good teamwork in it. Combined with teamwork, there's also a couple of uh, situations that I, I actually want your guys' opinion on, on how I pulled them off. Because personally, I do not know how I pulled these off. I honestly have no idea how I did it. At the very beginning, you know, everyone... I honestly, I don't complain about people at the very start of a match within the first 30 seconds, because you gotta think, some people just hit the auto drive, do a couple of other things at the very start of the match. It's expected. So whenever I get rammed, I don't get mad about it. I don't complain about it. There's no point to complain about it, just because it's the first few seconds. You know, you have your players that are just passive. We are playing on console. We're not playing on PC. A lot of people who play on PC they're a little bit more competitive whenever it comes down to it. And if they were to add like a ranked mode, I think a ranked mode would be absolutely fantastic because people will be loading in there immediately thinking where they want to go, where they need to line up, how to get set up. Now, in this situation right here, I was thinking that we're just going to get rushed on that side. I was calling Galaxy to come back. He, I've been playing with him now for just a couple of days. But... Originally, I thought that corner was going to get hit really hard and have everyone pushing back. So I told him to come over to me, get hauled down, and I can work from the top. Now, this position I've been taking in Himmel's Dwarf. I've been using these a lot. You've probably been catching it on live streams whenever I stream. Uh, then again, I have not been streaming as often as I usually do just because a lot of stuff's been coming up. You know, life hits and you got to take care of other things first. Ooh. But 
This position can be really good. It gives you overview, a little bit of map control. You control if you want to drop down, go left, drop down, support right. It's just overall control in this position here. So we're going to be putting a shell into the E75, pulling, backing up, trying to realign, because I want to make it to where it's going to be a lot harder to get through the armor. Up on the left side there, on the left side of the tank. The lower plate is covered a tad bit, and since we're located higher up, the top plate becomes a lot harder to penetrate. Got to clear the throat. And T29, we're absolutely getting rushed right here. And it looks like a little bit overwhelming. We got the two mediums on the left, the two heavies holding off center, and I just decided to fall back a tad bit and try and provide support, making it to where we try and cover all flanks coming down this way. Because you have a middle path, the side paths have the two mediums, um, our heavies in the center are getting taken down. Galaxy, I'm sorry I ditched out on you. But occasionally this happens, and you gotta take care of it. Now, right here, the Borask, he's in a good position. Honestly, he could have drove in the back and gotten over through the backside, but we're gonna come in, give him a little bit of a ram, a little bit of a love tap, and move around, taking a look around. This, I'm starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic. I need to try and think about how to get out of here. This is, I want you guys' opinion. How did I pull this off? I don't even know myself. I came around the backside expecting to see two tanks on my left. I didn't see a single tank in my left. And right here, we got the Type 4 pushing up. We're going to wait, put a shot into his rear, 429, and we completely escaped that entire engagement. Not a single person there decided to come rush us through the rear. I'm the only tank on the left side along with one medium, putting a 389 in the back of the Emil, helping the uh, 777 take down the Emil. And just, I, I I don't even know how I ended up right here. This It was such a decent, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I give up. But I got out of there, and it felt pretty nice. Now, the T10, overall performance, this tank has got really good power to weight. Combined with that, it has really good top speed. So your 14.75 power to weight is going to allow you to get into those aggressive positions, to be able to get out of places you need to get out of. And with the 258 turret armor, it, it's just going to be feeling absolutely amazing. Your turret, in some places, you got you got 270 down your lower cheeks. You got 250 on the gun mantle, right to the left and right of the gun mantle. You got 240 on a slanted angle. And 220, it slowly just starts to accelerate, and it looks really good. Now, up against the Yag Tiger, I wanted to get out of the front of this gun because we all know Yag Tigers. They got really good DPM. They can get their reloads down to. I have not played the Yag Tiger since before 6.0, so I do need to buy that tank back to find out what its reload is. But it's fast, and it's got a really hard hitting 128mm round. So whenever it makes contact, it's going to hurt. You do not want to sit out in front of it. Right here, trying to see if I can get some reverse side scraping going on. 705 off in the distance. I wanted, I wanted to try and push up to support him, but I only have 310 hit points. So really, for me, pushing places and being aggressive is kind of out of the uh, question right now. So trying to use the turret armor, get into a position that's going to be a little bit harder to hit me. And the one that came to mind was, well, right here. Now, the 777... And the Type 59 on my team, they're deciding to push up. They're going to be going up against three. Well, M48 rom -poms. they're not Type 59. Type 59's on the enemy team. Yes, the brain, smooth, potato. Uh, it, is, it is a day. It is another day. But, with everything that the T10 has to offer, the mobility this tank has, being able to move around really quickly, relocate, it just feels amazing. The gun handling this tank has as well, it does not feel like a Russian gun. I feel as in this thing hits consistently, and its accuracy is actually not too bad. Now, with the ammo loadout that I take on this, there's a lot of times that I'm only going to be going through so many rounds of match. So primarily, I usually load the amount of rounds I'll get off on average as my standards, and then the rest is premium and high explosives. I like to kind of flip it around to give it a better comfortable loadout. That way, if I do fire off my over the average amount of rounds that I fire off on average per match, then I have 
every single round after that as a premium or a complete mixture. Because, you know, some shots you're going to need heat, some shots you're going to need AP. You have overmatching in the game, so occasionally swapping back to your stand rounds to get an overmatch. Or swapping over to heat to, let's say, go through the front of a super conqueror. And to try and lock it down. Now, we're in a 2v2 situation. I'm done the 310 hit points. The triple seven is down to 307 hit points. Triple seven had a really good play back there with his two on one and me taking down the ISU 152, helping him out just a little bit more. Now, as the matches are going on, you know, we're I'm, I'm just uncomfortable. I'm thinking Fosh is going to be hitting this corner. He's going to be going full gun ho. This is just uncomfortable. I do not know what to do at all. But thinking about it, more than likely they're going to be expecting us to come up the left side ridge. Now, there's a lot of driving in this, and I'm not sorry to say it. I'm going to fast forward. Okay, we drove all the way around the map. I'm talking, we went down the three line. We sat at J4 for about a good minute. Along with that, we then drove across over to let's say H5, we sat in H5 for about a good 20 seconds, and by that point, I was like, you know what, we gotta go. If, if we don't go, it's seam destruction, it's gonna be a draw. So we need to get in there, we need to try and get some damage out, see what we can do. Taking it slow coming up this ridge, I didn't know if one was on the left or the right, I did not know where to go. Now, pulling up to the top here, you know, I'm just trying to use the armor best I can, and Fosh, I don't know where that shell went, it, it was just, it was, um, Narnia. Now, where they are, it's not a bad spot. However, all I had to do was pull up to the left side and then drive up. And doing that made it to where I can now get into an aggressive position and use my armor to the best of my ability because none of them were watching the rear. They were both focused on that back side. Now, right here up against the Fosh. Fosh, a little bit scary, it's an autoloader. I do not want to pull out in front of this autoloader. Not in the slightest. So all I want to do is try and bait shots into my lower plate or into my side track, which we baited a shot into the side track right there. So, you know, going in and out, in and out, wondering if he's on reload or not. I do not know if he's on reload. All right, so there's another shell. Now taking the time out, we're going to poke. We're going to take a shot. I do not know if he is still loaded or not. Popping the premium consumable. Taking my time, taking my time. Do not know. One more, here we go, gonna put 382, and, you know, the 777, he's just being patient. He is kicking back, he is waiting, he's not worried about it. Baiting a shot from the VK, putting another round into the Fosh, taking down the Fosh. And, right here, first thing that went through my head was, I have 310 hit points, this VK has an 88. Do I want to rush this? Do I want to kick back? No. I, I call attack inside the little uh, drive wheel there saying, let's get in there. This VK, I know from experience that he doesn't have enough gun depression to shoot the T10 if I'm hugging his side entirely. He is stuck aiming at my turret, which honestly, since he doesn't have the big boy gun, he can't overmatch my top armor, which means he's going to have to aim for a hatch. He's going to have to load a premium round and just getting up in there. I had no problem doing this but I bounced a shell now I'm loading again you know a little bit of panic coming here in my end right there I bounced a shell off of his top plate because we were driving forward so the game likes to render it in going to the top plate which means I should have aimed a little bit further to the right up towards his front but there we go third round going through taking him down the very end match there with that triple seven came down to a four versus two and with the assistance of the triple seven and with me both of us moving in utilizing our hit points using our tanks the best we can we came out on top with a four versus two and had one heck of a game mastery badge high caliber um on my way to getting my third mark on the e10 so i i can definitely say i do enjoy this tank but primarily my goal is not to mark tanks i was actually trying to see if i could report him and put in like preferred player i would like to see a preferred player report system because to me that'd be pretty cool to see to be able to stop and be like hey look i can actually prefer this player and give him a higher rating saying that i would rather play with this guy 
they need to add a, a new report system. I'll probably put in a, I'll submit a ticket saying that they need to add sportsmanlike behavior. So good sport or great teamwork, good communication, you know, something like that, like a report system like that. I would love to see something like that rather than just outright report, nothing but negative I'd rather see a separate report system where you can be like, this was positive. This was awesome. I want to give this guy a review because he was that good. And I want you to send this guy a message saying that I gave him a review, saying that I enjoyed my time because I can't communicate to PlayStation players. So if one of my PlayStation viewers can go back, take a look at that guy's gamer tag, send him a message with the link to this video so I can tell him thank you. You were an absolutely fantastic teammate to have, and I would not replace you for anybody else. Now, up here, E10, you know, we, we're aggressive. We've got top speed. We're going 50, 14.75 power to weight. We're on highway. Why not be aggressive? Why not get to the light tank position where light tanks like to go? You know, why not? Now... The shell velocity on these rounds at 940 and 920, you are going to be feeling this lacking a tad bit. You do not feel this tank being a long range sniper. This tank feels more of a close quarters to mid range and hello artillery, nice to see that you still exist. Killing the driver with 200 damage, not even 200 damage. Now, getting into this position, it, it, it's a little risky because you don't know if there's tank destroyers on the left, you don't know if the light tanks are going to rush you. But then I look behind me and I realize I have a whole team with me. And I had no problem being a little bit more aggressive this round. Now, it's kind of funny. The T-10 is one of those tanks that um, I actually play this tank just because I have fun. This is one of those tanks I just have a blast in. A while back, I uh, was playing with Blade and we were all like, don't tell his wife. And this is back whenever April Fool's was first going on. And... They were giving out all these emblems and everything else, and I decided to put on the little smiley face emoji on the side of my tank because I just thought it was funny. Because the conversation we were having that day was really funny. So each time I play this tank, it's a little laugh to me whenever I play my T10 now just because it, it's good memories. You know, a lot of people play tanks, you meet people, you play with people, you're here to have fun and just have a good experience. But you see, Wargaming every once in a while, they don't care about your experience. They're just like, mm, money, 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 money. You know, Mr. Krabs. But, same time, I can't say that. Because Wargaming, they're trying their best. Console, they don't want to copy what PC's doing, and I understand that. But, there are some aspects that do need to be fixed. You know, I'm not going to jump into that now. But, at the same time, nothing is ever perfect. There's always stuff that can be improved. There's always things that are going on. People are always going to find something to complain about. Me, I'm always going to complain about artillery. I don't care if it gets debuffed. If I'm getting shot across the map, oh yeah, I'm going to complain about it, because <laughs> I can. Now, this position right here, you don't see a lot of people taking this position just because it's very hard to get into it. But once you do get into it, it's a very strong position. Being able to come up on this little, um, up on the road, use the building off to your right to defend you from the right. Along with that, if you do get spotted, you can fall back, you can push down to the right, you can use the building in front of you. Keep in mind, it is a destructible building, but the thing is, it's a shot absorber. It can take two rounds to four rounds, depending on how you're playing around it, making it to where if you're trading with somebody, you pop up, the only thing showing is your turret. And this is something that, you know, a lot of you guys need to practice with, screw around with, just Find those positions that are out of the blue. This is one of those out of the blue positions that you don't see being used often. Just because getting the right circumstances to use that position is extremely difficult. Now I'm going to be whiffing a shell there straight into the dead tank. So talking about it, the T-10, this tank does lead up to... The Object 277, a Tier 10. The Object 277 is another tank that I absolutely enjoy playing. It's got the same play style as the T10. So really, playing the T10 and then jumping up a tier, you're not going to be noticing too much of a difference. Now, right here, I love what I just did right there. 
I was over angling trying to bait a shot into my rear because I knew that we had the space armor, we had the tracks in the way. The chance of him pinning us was around 30%. And lucky for me, I did not get penetrated. Made me a little bit happy that it worked out so well. And look at that, Skoda T50 just sitting out in the open. Just sitting there. You know, just let me take my time to aim, take a shot. Now, getting more into it, this was something that I, I thought about doing. I, I want to start going over some of my best matches. But the thing is, is that a lot of my best matches that I've been having as a recent are in tanks I haven't reviewed, I haven't gone over yet. And I just feel weird pumping out a video of a tank that I, I haven't even reviewed yet. Or may, maybe I should show off some matches, mention how I feel about it, pump it out. You know, but I have a lot built up right now and I'm feeling a bit more comfortable. You know, I've taken the time out. I've talked to a couple of people. I got some stuff lined up. By the way, right here, getting a little bit aggressive just because base cap down to 13 seconds. I'm all like, I need to get my shells off as quick as I can. Call on the attack. Get a ram, little bit of extra, throw in the heat round, guarantee the pin. And I'm, ooh, he jumped off the base. All right, time to get moving. Udez 16. All right, let's snap a shot. Oh, he hit the tracks. Any assist damage off that? Any, is everyone on reload? It seems like everyone was on reload during the entire time he was tracked. So that shell was like, ooh, that, that kind of sucks a little bit. Okay. The heavy tank, I'm not even worried about the heavy tank. My goal in this moment in time was death to the clicker who killed my driver. That was the only thing going through my head. That's it. It was worth it. I have no regrets. Absolutely nothing. Ah, yes. Five kills, 4,086 damage dealt, 1,700 experience. Not a bad match. That was actually a really good game. Now, 8,563 silver earned, 3,000 experience gained, Brothers in Arms, Mastery Badge, and the third mark of excellence on the T10. I can definitely say, for a fact, the T10 is one of those tanks that, if you haven't got it, I recommend to go get it. Or if you do have it and you haven't played it in a while, you know, get a, get a nice, good, shiny little rag, wipe off the dust, and pull it out. Because it's a tank, in my opinion, it's a gym. It's a gym in your garage that I will probably never get rid of just because it's one of those tanks that I pull out whenever I feel like doing something different. It's a heavy that has its own play style that's a little bit different compared to most. Its armor may not be the greatest. Treat it more like a medium tank with five degrees of gun depression and treating it like a medium tank, it will perform extremely well. Trying to play it like a heavy and brawl it out. You're going to find it struggling in a couple of places, but it can do it. You can trade hit for hit if you want to trade hit for hit. I just don't recommend it. I don't want to do it. I don't recommend anyone to do it. This tank is more of a mid-range city brawler or relocating fast enough to make it to where it can handle. And with the maps that are in rotation right now, I would definitely say T10 is up there. It can handle those maps extremely well. Now... With the vertical stabilizer, as I have on this, the gun stabilizer, I'm probably going to be trading those out for a traction system or maybe even the 5.5 just to squeeze out the extra little bit of power to weight and see if I can get into more aggressive positions and see what I can do. Other than that, it was nice having you guys here. It really was. You have no idea. I am going to get to it. I have the MX-1390 that I'm grinding right now. I'm also still working on the CS-59. You know, I've got a mark on it right now. And I'm going to make a review of the CS-59. I need to. I, I, I made a preview a while back, and then I completely just put it on the back burner for the longest time. I need to stop doing that. I need to start getting back on track. You know, because you, you guys apparently appreciate what I do. But I feel funky. I feel funky. You have no idea. I feel like a couple of weeks ago, I had 100 subscribers, and it was so simple. And all of a sudden, I look back at it, I'm like, wait, I'm at 600 now? It's uncomfortable to realize how many more people I have watching just because I don't advertise my channel. I just upload, and I call it good. And out of nowhere, here you guys all flocking to me. And I'm just like, oh, I, I do appreciate it, though. You have no idea. So if there's anything you guys want to see later in the future, let me know down in the comments. Or if you have a question for me, uh, or do you guys want a link to the Discord, uh, just 
put it in the comments and I'll take care of each one of you individually. Like, yeah, nice and simple. Other than that, it was nice having you guys here. I'll catch you later. See you on the battlefield.